Happy New Year 2021. Welcome back to Junk with Junior, folks. I don't have a lot of junk to work on today, no automotive projects, but I wanted to do another hobby of mine uh, that I haven't been able to do in a while because life has been so busy with everything else, but it's time to do some blacksmithing this morning. Let's get us a fire started. So we're starting by just drawing out these tips. And to draw them out, we're taking a piece of round stock and we're going to make it square on the tip. It's going to get it longer and skinnier. So we took a piece of ordinary old round stock, we drew it out on the end, which is actually making it a square in order to be able to draw it out. So we've got us a pretty decent little point on the end. We're gonna go for a little bit more point, then we can get a finial on there and go ahead and get our bend on here for the S hooks that we're gonna make. Uh, pretty basic blacksmithing stuff, but S hooks are really handy. Hooks that you can screw into a wall are really handy. So we're just gonna knock out some S hooks today. While we're at it, I went ahead and threw in another favorite of mine. The good old railroad spike. Starting to get some heat in it, so these are really thick steel compared to what we're working with. So I just throw this in there and just let it soak up some heat while I'm working those other two pieces of steel. And then you'll see me pull this out occasionally in between stuff and do some work on it. Uh, I like to put the twist in them first for the handle and then we'll start to draw out the blade. So now that it's drawn out nice and square, we gotta make it round again. Don't have to, I just like to. It can be done to anyone's choice of whether you keep it a square on the end or round. I like to go back round, then we're moving more of that steel. Okay, so there's the tip drawn out on this piece of stock that we're working on. So, like I said, we made it square. 
we drew it out along to a nice tip not perfect doesn't have to be i don't like any perfect sort of stuff my work never matches and that's one of the things that i think makes it unique is that you can tell it's made by hand and it's not perfect that's not my style so now that we got that end drawn out uh before we put a finial on it and loop it around for the s hook i'm gonna flip this whole thing around start heating up the other end of this piece of steel and we're gonna do the same thing So another thing with blacksmithing is you have to uh, make a lot of your own tools. That's what a blacksmith originally did. Obviously we all know they made horseshoes for everybody in the town, but they had to make tools as well. So there's not a lot of blacksmith, blacksmith work on this tool, but I needed something so that I could twist these railroad spikes because they are so thick and it is nice to have that decorative twist on them. So I took some old pieces of rod that I had and I found this steel that had this uh, channel cut in it. I just had to open it up a little bit for the spike to fit down in it and it slides in just like that and it was a pretty weak piece of steel so i just welded some stock around it to reinforce the whole thing so we're going to pull that spike out of there and get our initial twist on here and show you how this tool works I like to cool off the top of it so that we don't distort it too much because that is where the tool goes and the rest of it is what we need to have the twist the important part so get this thing in here Crank her down. When you twist them, they're always going to go a little bit crooked, but we can heat it back up and straighten all that out on the anvil. So there's our nice twist. Puts a little burr in it, the tool does, where it gets soft up here from it being hot, but we can hammer all that stuff back out and fine tune it on the anvil. But now you've got a nice decorative twist uh, on that spike. Okay, so now that we've got this tip drawn out on both ends, it's time to make a finial. We just like to roll the end of it over there. and it just makes it a little more attractive for the end result. Not the best one, but we're gonna get some more heat on the other one to see if we can do a little better. Actually, let's heat that same end back up. That's the beauty of blacksmithing. If you mess up or think you messed up, just heat the stuff up and start over. It's not the end of the world. Who would have thought that burning a little coal would be a nice eraser for you? Only if life had one of those. I haven't found it yet. There you go. I like to close it up a little better. That's a little neater and tidier. Just takes a little bit more heat and a few more seconds to tap and we're there. So now we can make a hook out of this. There we go. There's another nice little one on the other hook that we're working on. Remember, we're doing two at a time. No sense in burning one piece of steel at a time. It's a huge waste of energy. There you go, there's your hook on one end there. We can flip it around, get the other end heated up, 
So we can do the same thing. We're going to make a bigger radius on the opposite end uh, to hang stuff on because this is just going to hang on basically a, a wire panel. The small hook on the top, it doesn't need to be nowhere near that big, but just kind of how it was going, so we'll go with it. you have it. So there's one S hook. Like I said, we wanted one end to be a little smaller so that it can hang and then the other end a little bigger and open so that it can hang some stuff. But you can see they're a little bit crooked. So we're going to put a little bit of heat back in it and put it in the vise and just twist it around. We can actually beat it out as well. Um, but either way, just want to get it nice and flat so they're on the same plane and uh, hold your stuff nice and straight. It's one of those things. Yeah, you can go to the hardware store and buy some S hooks and hang stuff all you want to. It's just not the same. Doesn't have all the character. Anybody can buy stuff, but I actually do have, believe it or not, a lot of this stuff uh, in my shed and uh, hang tools up on it, you know, various items, a lot of really cool stuff and it was made by me. favorite part of mine this one's cooled off and lost a little bit of its temperature but to seal this stuff up and make it really nice so it doesn't rust instantly mother nature's the best choice beeswax definitely nice and smoky always smells good as well and when it cools off it just really seals it up and it also gives it that traditional you know black finish that we all know and love when you see something that has been blacksmithed but it just really preserves it and keeps it from rusting yeah you could paint it but when you just put something natural on it like this it's so much better than paint in my mind and uh eventually yeah it's gonna rust 
it'll start to get some little specks on it here and there. Uh, some of the stuff that I've done before, it actually takes a few years for that to happen, being uh, directly outside in the weather. So just a really nice option, uh, works good, I like it. Some more heat back in it. At least it's real quick when the anvil doesn't have a lot of heat in it. After you work the anvil for the better, better part of the day, it does start to retain some heat actually, and uh, then when you're setting your steel on there, it doesn't cool off nowhere near as quick. And for those of you wondering about the anvil, she's an old hay button. Was actually my grandfather's, and my grandmother didn't know, uh, Mama as we called her, she didn't know where he got it from or when he got it. Uh, he had had it as long as she could remember. So uh, old Poppy definitely uh, used it for all sorts of stuff. It's got some battle wounds on it. The edges are really worn on it. Uh, Pritchell holes, you know, seen better days. The edges really knocked off of it, but it still works just fine. It's even got some torch gouges in it where they were cutting material on it. But the fact that it's uh, an old family unit that's been passed down, that's really awesome. So uh, when Poppy had passed away, uh, it was given to my Uncle Teddy and he gave it to me. Uh, he was just keeping it for decorative purposes because uh, he likes to keep old stuff. But when he knew I was into blacksmith and he actually passed it down to me. Uh, so a lot, of, uh, a lot of love and pride in this anvil right here to have something that's passed down like that. And they just don't make them like they used to. So. That's the story on that. That's as good as they get in my mind. So we're just going to get this knife drawn out just like we did the hooks. Watch out. Sometimes you just don't know what these knives are gonna, I, I never know what these knives are gonna be like until I start making them. Uh, I just kind of go with the flow, uh, literally, of the steel. Um, never really have a plan, just follow what the steel's telling me that it wants to do. Uh, for some reason, these two knives that we're hammering out today, I feel like we should have a nice little curve on the handle, uh, adds to the looks of it, you know, amongst the twists there, but just gives you a nice firm, grip um, not that these are like really an intense kind of knife that you do crazy stuff with uh, they're kind of a decorative collector's item because they're a railroad spikes not the highest quality of steel but it's just neat I, I, I like making them uh, it's cool to take something that's a railroad spike to literally hold a train on a track and turn it into something that's decorative and useful Sometimes they get away from you a little bit. Don't have the most ideal tongs for, uh, for holding on to these things, but they work pretty decent because I can grab around the part up here, but sometimes they just fly out. So I'm gonna put a little more heat in it, and put a little more curve in it back here, a little more uniform, get it dialed in. Final step in making this knife, now that we've got it shaped and it looks good to us, the blade's nice and straight, so we've got to get this blade hardened because it's not the hardest of steel beans. it's a railroad spike, was not intended for a knife when they made it, I promise you that. So we've got it good and hot, I'm gonna let it cool down a little bit just to lose a lot of that glow. We're gonna get it to uh, where it's kind of dim and then we're just gonna dunk it in our bucket of old motor oil here and swish it around. And that puts a lot of carbon back in the steel. So the blade's gonna be hard now. And also that burnt motor oil on the surface gives it a really nice finish. I like the uh, black that it puts on there. And then whenever we grind the knife and sharpen it, 
Uh, it's going to reveal those uh, clean steel edges, so it gives a really nice contrast against the black surface. And once the blade's good and cool, then I like to give the whole thing a dunk, just to get some color on that handle as well. It just really adds to the look of things. As you can see, when it was hot, when we pulled it out of the forge, we had uh, just that traditional, you know, gray steel. But now, look at that black work of art that we have. Really proud of this one. Um, looks good. Of course, the tip's pretty rough on it, but all that's going to get ground away in the uh, grinding process on the belt sander. Well, there you have it, folks. There's how you forge your own knife and S-hooks. Knives are a little more detailed work than the old S-hooks, but they both serve a great purpose. I really enjoy doing this kind of stuff. It's just great therapy to get out here and literally hammer it out and get away from all the stuff that's going on in the world that we have today. So I hope you guys enjoyed uh, today's episode. Thanks for watching Junkie OF Junior, and we will see you next time.